What's up, Gadget Squad? Today we're going over the floating levitation module. We're gonna look at what it is and how it works. Inside of the box, we have another box and two wrappings. I was wondering how they would box multiple magnets together. So it's cool to see how it was separated. What you're gonna see here is the, essentially the magnet levitator. It's gonna be responsible for holding the magnet steady, but more of that later. Here we have a single disc magnet attached to the floating magnet. Here we have the 12 volt power adapter along with the circuit board power connector. All right, now we know what's in the box. Let's dive into how it all works. The first thing you wanna know about a magnet is that opposites attract. So as you can see here, Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. So we create attraction by placing a north pole, remember with the opposite and a south pole. That's gonna create that attraction. And vice versa, we create repulsion when we put two of the same poles near each other. So two of the north poles and two of the south poles, it's just, it's not. See, it'll just flip to try to attract. So the, I'll show you, let's take this for example. The red indicates North Pole, blue indicates South Pole. We're gonna do repulsion. All right. If I wanna bring it back, I just had to, Use the south pole. Where you going? Where you going? I didn't know. I tried these. Now we have a train. Shit. Somebody give me a license for this. There it is. You can just. Keep the attraction going. <laughs> there, that's what I should have done. We're gonna have to cut that, yeah. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, if it levitates by repulsion, then that's all I need to know. But Sally Squad, is not that simple. And that's because of one word, stability. As I make these ring magnets float, understand that the purpose of the tool is stability as well. Another thing to know about magnets is that they tend to flip themselves over in order to attract another magnet. It's not really that stable if you think about it. So it's important to know that when I say stability, I'm talking about balance because a stable system is self-centering when it becomes unbalanced. Moral of the story, no stability, no floating. But with a little stability, there you go. Let's take this cool knife as an example. If I held it from the top and pushed it from the bottom, you'll witness gravity pulling it back into the original position after the momentum stops. You can consider this stable because it's self-centering. Now, if I held it from the bottom with my hand flat open, it would be unstable since there isn't a component to self-center it if it were moved. I can, however, create a stable system with my hand in the bottom by consistently adjusting my position and self-centering when it becomes unbalanced. This should help you understand why the magnetic ring is able to float. But it also begs the question, how does this device hold the floating magnet steady? To answer this, let's take a closer look at the module and its parts. Facing up, we see a large ring magnet with the south pole facing up. This floating magnet comes with a single disc magnet attached to the bottom. The single disc magnet has a south pole facing down. On the module, there are four steel shafts which are wrapped by coils of insulated copper wire. These steel shafts are highly susceptible to magnetization when a magnetic field is applied to it. 
The magnetic field channels through the steel, which makes the steel act as a magnet. Most of us have seen this happen before with paper clips. By using one magnet, you can have paper clips act as magnets themselves. For those who haven't seen it, watch here. Ultimately, with an electrical current, those steel shafts will begin to act like magnets themselves, with their north poles facing up. After we connect the device to a power source, the device's sensors also go online. Essentially, the sensors help regulate magnetic strength for the purpose of balance. The three ratio metric sensors are located at the center. These three tiny chips are oriented to sense the magnetic field in each direction. So when the floating magnet tips to the side, the system can sense it and turn on the right electromagnet to give it a stabilizing push. So now that we know how it all works, let's get this device connected and online so we can make this magnet levitate. I find that the best way to place the magnet is to use one hand to hold the large ring magnet down while you use the other hand to place the magnetic disc down. That way you get to feel the balance. I've seen people use magnetic levitators for home decoration, but there are other worldly applications to this. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace.